Hello and welcome to my Fortress of Battle Caverns, my 12th major fortress in my world of Thedar Zirko. I embarked in a pretty generic chunk of wilderness with an assortment of pretty generic starting dwarves, because what was happening on the surface wasn't really important to me, and I needed to get the basics of the fortress up and running before I could properly get into my plan. That plan was to train a squad of dwarves to be masters slash lords of their chosen weapons, and then to abandon them in a cavern with food and drinks to see how long they could last against the local population of whatever mole slash lizard type people lived there. At first I planned to just abandon them in the caverns for however long it took them to die, but after seeing the number of comments calling me evil over the course of the last couple videos, I thought that this could be a moment of humanity for me. And so I changed the plan to just one year of abandonment in the caverns, and if any of them survived that long, I would theoretically welcome them back with open arms. But before we could do any of that, we required more people, more supplies, and more access to the caverns. So I directed the dwarves to dig down and begin the fortress building process. And by begin the fortress building process, I really mean digging out little pillars and chopping down trees in the first cavern we found, to tidy it up and make it a little easier to keep track of what would be going on when I eventually sent a squad out there. I was a little concerned about wandering giant olms or cave crocodiles popping in to say hi before we had an actual fortress going though, and so once the pillars had been removed and the structural integrity of the cavern had been put in peril, I marked out a basic fortress inside the central large pillar of the cavern. Our construction efforts were noticed by the giant olms and cave crocodiles I feared, but they didn't bother coming over. Unlike the amphibian people lurking in the water, who were quite interested in what we were up to, and took it upon themselves to stop our construction efforts by any means necessary, even if it meant getting strangled a little bit. They had managed to kill one dwarf and severely injure another, but a timely migrant wave brought us up to 16, which was perfect because after another amphibian attack, we still had 14 dwarves left to work on the fortress, which was plenty. With our most useless, easily killed dwarves out of the way, we took the time to block off the fortress from the dangers of the cavern with a bridge, and worked on refining the fortress into something more livable. With that out of the way, we once again returned to the cavern to wall off a section of mud that we could use to produce massive amounts of plump helmets, which we needed to do because I wanted to stockpile a year's worth of food for the soldiers going into the caverns. Once the fortress was fully set up, it was time to wait for more migrants to come, so I could establish the Cavern Survivors Squad. I killed the time by digging out a reserve food stockpile that would be accessible from both the cavern and the fortress, depending on how the doors were locked, and by following a giant cave toad around for a while. Eventually, the migrants I was looking for arrived, and were recruited to be Cavern Survivors. That was great news, that meant I could move on from waiting for migrants to arrive, to waiting for soldiers to train. As fun as it was watching the soldiers mill about, whacking each other with swords non-lethally, I did eventually attempt to fill some of the time I was faced with by digging into the cavern from the reserve food stockpile so that when the soldiers were stuck in the cavern, they could still access food and drink when necessary. All I was looking to do was replace a wall with a door and maybe clean up a little, but the amphibian people in the cavern found the change in decor quite unpleasant, and they came out in numbers to protest it. I was forced to send in the still unready cavern survivors because they were just about the only dwarves in the fortress with military experience, and all the civilians found the mysterious allure of the caverns quite, well, alluring, and they were dying in droves out there. After the initial couple waves of amphibian people were dealt with by the cavern survivors, I considered just leaving them out there and starting the one year countdown early, but one militia member had already been lost, they weren't trained to the point of mastery, and there were hardly any civilians left to protect slash impress with their military prowess, and so I brought them back to the barracks to resume their training. Over the course of the next year or so, I watched the soldiers get better and better at fighting, while more and more migrants came to repopulate the fortress. Eventually, as the year 184 was winding to a close, the final dwarf and cavern survivors achieved swordmaster status, which meant that the whole squad was made up of masters and lords. With my training requirements achieved, I decided that the cavern survivors would be put to the test, starting on the 1st of spring, 185. But before I could send them to their potential doom, I wanted to look through the thoughts of all the soldiers, to see what kind of mind state they would be taking into the cavern. While there was a bit of variation from dwarf to dwarf, the overall vibe could probably be best described as happily drunk, which is certainly one way to prepare for a year trapped in a cavern. 
As 184 turned to 185 and the cavern survivors were officially on their own, they made their way into the cavern and were immediately attacked by multiple waves of amphibian people. Multiple soldiers were caught up in martial trances, and the amphibian people didn't seem to be putting up much of a fight, until eventually, the effort required to hold off the writhing masses of frogs proved to be too much for Kib the Mace Lord on just her second day in the cavern, as she passed out from exhaustion after leaving her martial trance and was promptly stabbed for doing so. At this moment, it seemed quite dire for the cavern survivors, with one dwarf down on day two of 336, but soon the frogs thinned out, and the soldiers had time to breathe and eat and drink and all that important stuff, and the days began flying by. Early spring turned to mid-spring, and we took the fight back to the amphibian people instead of just waiting for them to come to us, as we targeted frogs coming in from the bottom right corner of the map. Their numbers were quite sparse compared to the onslaughts the cavern survivors had faced initially though, and multiple slow weeks passed by between incidents. Before long, spring was just a memory and they were coasting through summer, enjoying the extra hot temperatures and stinking clouds of miasma filling the cavern. That seemed to be about as interesting as it was going to get in the summer months, before some of the spirits of the many dwarves killed in the cavern decided to rise up and haunt the cavern survivors a little bit. While I definitely appreciated a good haunting, not that I'm evil, ghosts weren't really the kind of enemy I was looking for the cavern survivors to fight, so I eventually put them to rest, and went back to watching the angry little red faces pop up above the heads of my soldiers. As summer turned to autumn, with only a single dwarf defeated, I decided to send the cavern survivors on something of a premature victory tour, from the northernmost point of the cavern, to the southernmost, and back again, which was definitely not intended to rile up the local inhabitants. But shockingly, sending my soldiers stomping through their territory did drive some frogs up the wall, but they still didn't manage to kill any of my dwarves. To keep things interesting, I decided to turn this north-south patrol into a monthly thing, but in mid-autumn, I made the, perhaps, reckless choice of sending the cavern survivors right to the water's edge of a section of pool I knew was filled with amphibian people. Sure enough, three dwarves were driven into the water, where their armor, exhaustion, and general dwarven disposition led to them drowning. Along with the constant stabbing and my maybe sort of willful negligence, of course. Still, six highly trained dwarves trapped in the caverns was no easy target, and as they made their way from north to south over the next couple of months, nobody was interested in messing with them. That was until a massive wave of frogs, seven cavern dweller warnings strong, emerged from the south and rushed towards the cavern survivors. That turned out to be a huge mistake for any of the frogs that had families they would have liked to return home to, because they were dispatched so easily, no dwarf even got hurt. At worst, they were just tired. By this point, it was mid-winter time, and I was two months away from having to let six dwarves back into the fortress, when really, ideally, I was looking for at most one. And so, to keep things interesting, and definitely not because I'm evil, I sent in some miners to link up the other caverns and maybe uncover something in the gem-studded walls I came across. While my miners dug around, I sent my dwarves all over both the caverns they could access to maximize the impact of their victory parade, aka expose them to as many creatures as I could find. It turned out that I could find no creatures though, and my soldiers just wanted to hang out by some pond grabbers in the second cavern. And to make matters worse, the one miner I had left that I hadn't melted finding the magma sea got herself entombed in obsidian when she dug out a magma pocket with water at her feet. With no hope of finding some last minute excitement, I returned the cavern survivors to their typical place between the main fortress and the reserve food stockpile, and waited out the final couple days. They had successfully survived a year. Due to the promise I had made, I couldn't just leave them out there, as much as I might have wanted to so I let them back into the fortress and checked on their thoughts. They were still pretty excited about kicking, but in general the happy drunk vibe they had going in had been replaced with more of a tired, stressed out vibe coming out. But as they got back into training and typical fortress life, they had no idea that I was still looking for that months after last minute buzzer beater monster attack within the gem walls. I kept finding useless god tier treasure in the little pockets I discovered instead of the demons I was looking for until eventually a brute of brine was uncovered and tasked with killing all the cavern survivors who had shown me up by surviving just a little too easily. As she ascended the stairs, killed the random dwarves she came into contact with, and made her way into the cavern, 
I was feeling pretty good about her chances. Her poisonous gases seemed pretty poisonous after all. But my soldiers showed me up once again, and didn't even have the courtesy to die a little bit as they killed my months late attempt on their lives. I guess I had just made them a little too good. Thank you for watching, an extra thank you to those of you who support me on Patreon, and I'll see you next time.